Back in 2019, in Comic Con, MCU announced that it will be releasing a new Blade movie, with Mahershala Ali playing the beloved vampire hunter. Honestly, for me, it was the best news in their Phase 4 announcement, because I'm a huge fan of the Daywalker. The first Blade movie was visually stunning and stylish. Who could forget the opening scene? Where we see vampires, drenched in a shower of blood, in an underground rave party. And then, Wesley Snipes enters, clad in a black trench coat. Alone, looking badass and confident, that he can take down a whole army of bloodsuckers. If you're a comic book reader, you know that Blade has the weirdest looking costume. But after the movie... It defined the look of this C-lister superhero. That's how good the first movie is. It dictated onward the look and feel of Blade when you read him in comics. Similar to the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, a lot of people still look up to Blade, except you, Blade Trinity, as one of Marvel's best outings in the cinema. Unfortunately, the production of the new movie hasn't been smooth sailing. The main cause of delay are a ton of script rewrites and changes in director among others. You can't blame them. The recent Marvel movie outings are disastrous, and they want to get this right. Allegedly, they'll be bringing in Blade's daughter, Bloodline, rumored to be played by Milan Ray. There's this trend going on called Unchi where most of the male characters are getting a female counterpart, and it's turning off a lot of fans. Damn! It's a good thing that they still retain Mahershala Ali as the titular character. He was amazing in Netflix's Luke Cage. Meanwhile on the Marvel Comics side of things, they are slowly integrating Blade in the bigger Marvel Universe. Before, he usually appears when there's vampires that need slaying. But this time, he's now part of bigger Avengers-level threats. Back in the 90s and early 2000s. To coincide with the movies, Marvel had a steady release of Blade comics. In preparation for the upcoming movie, they are now pushing for a lot of titles to include Blade. Whether as a part of the Avengers, Strike Force, Spirits of Vengeance, or Midnight Suns, to one-shot stories, tie-ups to massive story arcs, to showing up in his daughter's solo title, our favorite Daywalker is back in comics format. To make things sweeter, Marvel finally released a new solo Blade title. Like I said, there were already several Solo Blade titles released in the past. Some are good, some mediocre, and some are just bad. I've bought and read them all, at least the first issues. But let me say this. The 2023 Blade comic written by Brian Hill and drawn mostly by Elena Casagranda blew my mind away. And after I read the 10-issue arc, I thought to myself, MCU should try to adapt this into a screenplay and make it into the Blade movie. Warning! The next scene contains a review of the new Blade comic, and I'll be touching some spoilers. So if you plan to read that comic, close the tab. But don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, warnings up. In a nutshell, the story begins with some dude from the werewolf nation called Tanaka, asking Blade to protect a girl, Dana Smith, from supernatural forces trying to hunt her down. Aside from Blade being a softie when it comes to keeping women safe from harm, he also owes Tanaka, so he agrees to do the task, even if he got a lot of questions in his mind. After taking down some vampires trying to kill Dana, Blade brought her to a safe house, where he eventually came face to face with the one chasing after her. Blade manages to kill him, then the double cross happens, it turns out that Dana is a Dana, some primordial demon, hell bent on destroying the human and supernatural world to forge a new one and Blade took out the only being with the skill, knowledge and power, to stop her. It's a great twist, that's actually been used several times on a Blade comic, where he gets betrayed by a woman he was supposed to save. But the dialogue and meticulously drawn frames by Casagranda gave this trope a fresh new take. I particularly like the shedding of her human skin to reveal the true form of our big baddie. From there on, Blade goes on a quest to stop Adana. He teams up with his ex-girlfriend Tulip, who also happens to be an arms dealer of supernatural weapons. He also meets Ratha, a girl who is part of an ancient group, formed by Doctor Strange to keep the Adana on check. A hateful Doctor Strange also joins them on the quest for the ultimate weapon, Lucifer's sword, the Lightbringer. 
Unfortunately, the sword turns out to be the key for the Adana to fulfill her plan of awakening one's innate occult ties, and Blade just handed it to her. She's literally awakening the hidden demons in some individuals. Imagine sleeper agents being activated. What's cool about Adana is that she's so powerful and always a step ahead. She just toys with Blade. She keeps sparing his life and tells him to bring it on in their next encounter. Blade knows that he will surely lose again the next time they meet and he has to do something drastic. So, he asks for Dracula's help to fight evil by being evil. This is actually my favorite issue of the series and what I felt was a step up for Blade overall as a comic book character. For the longest time, we only know Blade as the vampire hunter, who relies on silver weapons, guns, swords, stakes, his ability to heal fast, and inhuman strength to fight his foes. Dracula finally unlocks Blade's vampiric abilities. This time he can turn into a wolf, turn into mist, and so much more. With his new powers, Blade goes on a quest again to find answers on how to defeat the Adana. I felt that the issue with the Hulk seems fillerish and unnecessary. But it is a good peek into Adana's new world where personal demons are unleashed. Then, Blade goes to Satana and asks her to send him to Hell to find more answers on how to stop the Adana. In Hell, he is reunited with Draven, the only guy who can stop the Adana, who Blade killed in the first issue, and brings back his spiritual form in the mortal world. Blade then, burns the location of the archives of the second world, a library that houses sacred books and scriptures of the supernatural. There's a pact that this place is neutral and will remain untouched, and the destruction of it will cause enmity to whoever has done the deed. This act triggers inhabitants of the supernatural world to seek Adana's help to eliminate Blade once and for all. And of course, the final battle ensues. I won't spoil the ending, but I highly recommend reading the whole series. In my opinion, they ended this arc perfectly, and this is the best Marvel Solo Blade title to ever come out. No way! Yes way! Marvel did promise that a new Solo Blade comic will be released this year, that might continue the events in this arc. Or after their current Blood Hunt massive crossover concludes, where Blade plays an integral part. While the story is excellent, the artwork is a mixed bag. I really wish that Elena Casagranda handled all the art chores from issues 1 to 10. She's one hell of an artist, who does a lot of creative stuff in the way she frames. In between issues, they threw in some filler artists, who in a way were trying to emulate Casagranda's style. They managed to pull it off, adding their own flair. But when you view everything as a whole it feels inconsistent. The variant covers especially on the first issue look amazing, that I had to double dip. But in my opinion it doesn't beat the covers Tim Bradstreet did, for the more mature Blade, in their Max imprint. Honestly, if they were to use this comic as the basis for the upcoming Blade movie, that would be... Excellent! I was actually starting to imagine it adapted into live action. The new design for the Blade costume is reminiscent of Christian Bale's clerical suit in Equilibrium. Adana's a cool and powerful villain who doesn't really need her disposable henchmen, and is actually a force to be reckoned with. She also has a valid motivation to be evil. Blade also has a great cast of memorable support characters that have their own backstories. In this comic, Blade also has dealings with the werewolf nation, and I thought, that was just so correct. Blade, being a creature of the night too, will eventually have to deal with other supernatural beings. Blade is somewhat similar to Hellboy in nature, who dealt with creatures from different folklores like the Baba Yaga and Koschai the Deathless from Russia. There was a story where he was in Japan, and encountered these floating vampire heads. And of course undead Nazis. Blade's newfound powers, now being able to turn to bats, or mist, or a wolf, is a huge step from the Wesley Snipes movies. Seeing Blade pull off those powers, probably makes up for a cool cinema moment. Something but, but, worth applauding when you see it in the big screen. Now the only question is, will it be a total reboot, or a continuation of the previous Blade films? For fans of Blade, the release of the new movie might take longer. But it is a good thing that Marvel, even if it's just in the comics, put the spotlight back on our favorite vampire hunter. Go pick up this recently concluded Blade solo series, 
or go get the Blade Early Years Omnibus. You can even check the Blood Hunt Mega Crossover. The more people showing interest on Blade, the better the chance of Marvel fast-tracking the movie. Anyways, thanks for listening, and catch you in our next review.